The game's in there, but the action's out here. The Israeli football team, Beitar Jerusalem, is making headlines not for what it does on the pitch, but what it does off it. If I'm as a fan, don't, 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 don't want that my enemy will be a player in my team, I, I can say it. Chants like this, we hate all Arabs, are only the tip of the racist volcano. And although the team's management has tried to play the racism down, it's been forced to admit there's a small cluster of dedicated fans who loudly express their hatred of Arabs. The racism in Israel is illegal, and there's no official policy by any club. But it's up to the coach to choose the players. And uh, it's not that there's positive discrimination in Israel. No one has to employ anyone specifically. And uh, there just hasn't been a situation where an Arab player has played for Beitar. But keeping the two sides apart does little to dispel the hatred. They try to say that there are just a few racists, 5 to 20 people, but that's not right. Racism is in the DNA of this team, it's in their blood. Rifat Turk is a football legend in Israel. He was the first Arab to play for the Israel national team and to represent the country at the Olympic Games. I remember playing against this team. Their supporters cursed me because I'm an Arab Muslim. If this is not racism, what is? And the problem is that the law in Israel does not know how to stop them. It's not good. They're doing it for nothing. These players from Chechnya aren't with the Jewish people. They're not with the team. We have different values. We don't want our enemies to join our team. Arabs from Chechnya, it's the same thing. We don't want Arabs to join. While other countries have faced international sanctions for racist incitement by fans, Israel has so far avoided such close scrutiny. But fears are growing that the beautiful game there is slowly being turned into a source of violence, racism and hatred. Paulus Lea, RT, Jerusalem.